I'm a big proponent of making sure that the right people are at the table to start any form of dialogue. To get to ethical storytelling, we must go into it not blindly. We must go into it understanding that there is wounds and pains from the past that have led us to actually even crafting a term like ethical storytelling, which shouldn't be the case. Um, so we start by acknowledging those that have happened in the past, understanding where we are at in the present and co-designing what the future needs to look like. So I would, I, I would strongly advocate for more and more uh, multi-stakeholder engagement to build understanding, to build empathy, to, to, to build appreciation of the beauty and diversity of all of our narratives. I think what we recognise is in, in order to sort of rethink how we're doing our storytelling um, in some of the ways that we've discussed previously on the call, it was actually more about behaviour change and cultural change, which I think you touched on. Um, so actually, the way we approached this was to really make it a very much a bottom-up discussion around, which started around 2019, in terms of talking, just having a conversation about it. I think we positioned some ideas in my team, um, and again, I can't take credit for this, it was very much um, driven by um, 18 communicators across different countries and contexts who um, wanted to really think about, you know, what could we be doing differently? And so we facilitated lots of different discussions around that. And, and over the process of about a year, we developed these, I call them the six seeds of change. That we, they're the care global comms commitments. And they cover different things around, you know, applying justice narratives, which I think we've discussed, investing in local talent, investing in local photographers, videographers. No one is going to tell that story better than than them. Um, it is around how we, you know, the types of people we put forward as spokespeople. There's a whole, you know, host of things. And this was very much a kind of, you know, it was just a sort of a set of ideas that were kind of presented throughout our working group, which is about 300 odd folks. And um, and I think that was a really, was the right way to go because I don't, because then it, it sort of, it was a process of listening and learning. It's, it's been quite difficult navigating these conversations, but I think innovative things like partnering with institutions who you can leverage on their networks, you can leverage on their expertise, right? It's, a, it's one objective, but there are many of us who are approaching that objective from different perspectives. And so the more we partner with institutions, the more we provide those who can provide support, those who can provide technical expertise, you know, those who can provide funding, we can all come together and just synergize. Uh, an audit of our image database, they're a very practical thing I think people can do. Um, and it has, again, just been, you know, we did the first one, we had a sort of quite basic methodology, which was looking at, you know, um, how many images were taken by um, white men from the global north, uh, how many were being taken by, um, uh, how many were taking pictures of um, of women. I mean, CARE has a very strong uh, focus on gender and gender justice. Um, we looked at uh, how many images are having consent and so on and so forth. So some, some quite sort of qualitative um, analysis, but also what we introduced just in our last audit was more um, sort of subjective questions around, is this image uh, dignified? Is it empowering? Is it, um, does it represent the vision that we have as an organization? And what I think is so interesting from that is that we've been able to see, and I think we talked a bit about accountability and discussing what that can look like in an organization. By doing these audits, we're able to compare to where we were sort of two years ago. And we see that we've seen like a threefold increase um, over a two year pe period in terms of who's taking the image. So much more images being taken by women, majority of whom are um, uh, national to the context that the image is being taken. But what has also been really interesting is, and we use a, we use a group of about 30 volunteers from all different regions, Middle East, Africa, Europe, all over the world, come in and help us do this analysis. And on the subjective questions where we get often two people looking at the same image, there was a real divide in terms of 
Um, there was more agreement around things that were clearly empowering, but it was really hard to see that kind of agreement around things that may be a little bit more grey, a bit more of a borderline question. So that beautifully brings out a lovely dialogue and debate we can have around subjective bias and who is it we need to be thinking about when we do the next audit in terms of could we be talking to our partners, could we be talking to our programme participants around some of this. We are also partnering with an institution called DGB. Um, some people call it DGB, but it, it's um, DGB, I, I call it. So uh, what they are meant to do is to gamify our ethical storytelling handbook. Right, and so the gamifying the ethical storytelling handbook takes it away from this mysterious esoteric subject to something that is very fun to engage with. Right, it is very accessible and fun to engage with. Don't start with your leaders, start with the folks who are on the ground telling the stories, um, make it a bottom up approach, and then when you get beautiful impact from that story you will have made your case to your leadership and they will not be able to deny that process. What we also realised is that the communication team um, can, can lead the way. Sometimes we don't have to wait for the CEO uh, you know, to, to, to say yes or to approve. You know, We can actually lead the way in, in communicating respectfully and ethically and, and you know, the others will follow. And, and what we did at PATH, we developed a guidance, a communication guidance uh, around, you know, respectful storytelling, how, we, you know, the photography and all these things. And it's become part of a brand identity. Uh, of course, sometimes we we don't really fully live 100% to it, but we are leading the way in that regard.